And welcome everybody to another edition of the GSMC Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. As always, I'm your host, Kenneth Grunfelder, and it's great to have you guys here on this Wednesday, March 13th. We have a lot to talk about on the show today. Before I get into that, I just want to remind you guys, as always, to tip or donate and get your comments recognized, make sure to go to the following link. That is gsmcpodcast.net. Again, that really helps the show, makes the show more interactive between myself, the host, and you guys, the viewers. Again, that is gsmcpodcast.net. And as always, it is displayed on the ticker on the bottom of the show segment down below. So with that being said, let's get into what we are going to talk about for today. So more free agency stuff. Um, we're going to talk about a couple of running backs. So I know Derrick Henry was one of the last running backs, or big name running backs left. And uh, yesterday he did indeed sign with the Baltimore Ravens, so we'll talk about that. We'll also talk about Joe Mixon being traded to the Houston Texans and how that helps out the Texans and their running game. Um, then in the second part of the show, we'll talk about the Texans more. We'll talk about them and the Philadelphia Eagles. Those are two teams that have made a lot of moves, um, so we'll talk about them. Then we'll get into a couple of wide receiver news. Uh, Deontay Johnson being traded to the Carolina Panthers from the Pittsburgh Steelers. And also Darnell Mooney signing with the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, so a couple of uh, NFC North players uh, joining forces. Uh, well, now former NFC North players in uh, Darnell Mooney and Kirk Cousins, of course, signing that four-year deal. And then in the final part of the show, we'll talk about Justin Fields because he's kind of in no man's land right now. And we'll talk about the latest um, with him. So let's get into the first topic, which is talking about a couple of running backs. So Derrick Henry, who obviously spent his entire career up to this point with the Tennessee Titans, uh, he signed with the Baltimore Ravens. And there was some mutual interest between uh, both sides. Uh, the Ravens actually did try to acquire him at the trade deadline, and the Titans uh, didn't allow it or didn't want to do that. So um, ends up signing with them on a two-year, $16 million deal, uh, potentially worth up to $20 million, with $9 million guaranteed in the first year. Um, the biggest thing is the fact that he's going to be joining Lamar Jackson. And, you know, Lamar Jackson and his playmaking ability, especially running the football, um, you know, I, I mean, it that's going to be a problem for a lot of teams. That is going to be a matchup nightmare, having to deal with both of those guys in the same backfield. Um, you know, the read option is going to be a problem um, because you got Derrick Henry who, you know, still got some good football left, I think, in the right situation, and this is the right situation for him. And then, of course, you know, Lamar Jackson coming off of an MVP season. Um, now you're pairing him with Derrick Henry. I mean, this it, this is going to be fascinating to watch. Um, for next season. But um, when it comes to Derrick Henry, he's rushed for over 1,000 yards in five of his past six seasons and led the NFL in rushing in 2019 and 2020. Um, set, he finished second in the NFL last season with 1,167 rushing yards, 12 rushing touchdowns, um, and the Titans, their offensive line was not very good. Uh, and there were a couple of games where Derrick Henry really couldn't do much, and... You know, some people were saying how Derrick Henry was washed, and I mean, listen, he's 30 years old, and you know, he's starting to, uh, he's on the uh, the other side now, um, but he, I, like I said, I think he's still in the right situation, he's still got some good football left. Um, Henry led the NFL with 937 rushing yards and 10 rushing touchdowns in the first eight weeks of the 2021 season, and then he suffered that foot injury. Um, I do remember that. Um, he was named to the Pro Bowl for the first, fourth time in his career in 2021. Uh, he was selected by the Titans in the second round of the 2016 draft out of Alabama. He won the Heisman Trophy and a national championship in 2015. Um, and, yeah, and he's been consistent. Um, you know, again, injuries, like in 2021, that hurt his season. But, again, still got close to 1,000 yards. Um, and, like I said, in the right situation, you know, he uh, he could still be productive, and I think this is one of those situations. And the other thing, too, is, like, yeah, he could, you know, he's still going to get a, a decent workload, but, you know, now you have Lamar Jackson who's going to take some of the pressure off of him. Lamar Jackson's going to carry the ball, um, you know, throughout games. And, you know, again, if Derrick Henry needs a break, you know, the Ravens, 
they have some running backs that, you know, can come in and give him a break as well. Um, you know, we'll see, you know, what happens with Keaton Mitchell. Um, you know, obviously he tore his ACL, so hopefully he bounces back. Um, I think they still have Justice Hill. I know Gus Edwards and J.K. Dobbins are free agents. Gus Edwards went and signed with the um, with the Chargers. Uh, but, I mean, listen, this is an upgrade over what the Ravens have had. And, again, Gus Edwards did well for them. But, you know, with Derrick Henry now, you know, it's, it's again, he's 30. But, um, like I said, he's still got uh, some good years left in him. And the bottom line is this. You know, I mean, you go back to the AFC Championship game. Ravens only ran the ball six times. You know, that can't happen with Derrick Henry. Like, you're going to give Derrick Henry the ball. Um, so, I, yeah, I'm excited to see, you know, what these two can do to, can accomplish together between Derrick Henry and Lamar Jackson. Um, again, I think it's a good fit. And, again, it's going to be a matchup nightmare for opposing defenses. So uh, I'm looking forward to see what they can do together. And, uh, yeah, so that's one thing that happened. Then another thing that happened was uh, Joe Mixon going to the Texans. Now, the, the Bengals were going to flat-out release him, but then the Texans came in and said, hey, well, uh, you know, we could take him off your hands, and they ended up uh, trading for him. Um, I don't know what the specific uh, return was for the Bengals. I'm going to look that up right now. But, yeah, so the Texans ended up acquiring him, and, they lost Devin Singletary. He signed with the Giants. So they only had Damian Pierce. And Damian Pierce is coming off of a dis disappointing season. He took a step back. You know, he had a promising rookie season. Um, but I guess, again, took a step back. They ended up getting Devin Singletary, bringing him in. And, uh, yeah, Singletary actually had his best season. Um, you know, now he's with the Giants. But, yeah, so the Texans, they went out and they got Joe Mixon. Because, again, Joe Mixon was going to end up getting released anyways. Um, and, uh, yeah, so they find a replacement uh, for Singletary. Um, you know, and obviously the Bengals, they brought in Zach Moss. And you still got uh, you got Chase Brown, who they drafted. So that's going to be their new backfield. And the Texans are getting Joe Mixon. So um trying to see if they have the return. Of course, I go on ESPN. It doesn't have it. Um, yeah, so I'm not 100% sure what the return was for it, but I'm assuming it's, you know, some kind of draft compensation. Um, but, you know, Mixon's coming off of a decent year, um, with the Bengals. I know the Bengals, they weren't a great rushing team in 2023, but, you know, his numbers are okay. Um... He had nine touchdowns. He had over a thousand yards rushing in 2023, um, and like I said, they did agree to a deal with Zach Moss, the Bengals. So um, you know that that he's going to end up being their his replacement. Um, Houston's rushing attack in 2023 ranked 28th in yards per game, only 92.7, and Mixon spent the past seven seasons with the Bengals, starting 88 of 97 uh, appearances. And making one Pro Bowl. Um, he's had 4,000 yard rushing seasons and threw a touchdown pass in the Super Bowl against the Rams. Um, so, yeah, I mean, again, he's, you know, getting up there in age in terms of running backs, a little younger than Derrick Henry. Um, but, I mean, I, I think he could still be productive with the Texans. Um, you know, again, he joins Damian Pierce in the backfield there. So we'll see what ends up happening. Um, but, I mean, I, I think that's a decent move for the Texans. I, I, I think Mixon can still, again, like Derrick Henry, he's still got, you know, some good football left in him. Um, I don't know how much. I mean, you know, because, again, he's on the older side when it comes to running backs. But, you know, I, I, I think, um, and, and especially with the Texans, they're another team. I mean, they're kind of a different team than the Ravens are. The Texans are going to throw it. You know, the Ravens are going to be a team that's going to run first. Uh, even though uh, in 2023, you know, Lamar Jackson had better weapons around him. So, you know, he was going to, he threw it a little bit more. But, um, yeah, I think I, when I look at the Texans, I think of them more as a, uh, you know, a pass first team. Uh, so, but, you know, you bring in Mixon, and I, I think he could do all right with them. 
So we'll see what happens there. But again, I, I think, you know, the bigger headline of the two is, I, I, is Derrick Henry going to the Ravens. Um, and it's just amazing how all the running backs, they just are trading places. Well, not really trading pla Well, they're going to different places. I mean, they're not really, like, trading with each other. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, the, all, the, all the big names are off the board now pretty much uh, when it comes to the running backs, unless I'm missing somebody. I think Dalvin Cook is still – I mean, Dalvin Cook is still a big name, but I don't know if he's really going to – I don't know what his uh, situation is, if someone's going to pick him up. Because I, I don't think he's still with the Ravens. Because I was trying to look into, like, what his situation is, and I couldn't really find anything. So we'll say, But, yeah, I mean, all the big names are gone, are off the board. You know, down Derrick Henry is, you know, Josh Jacobs, Saquon Barkley, Tony Pollard, Swift. Yeah, that's it. You know, everybody's pretty much uh, in a new situation. And it's it's going to be interesting to see how everybody does. Um, again, love the Derrick Henry signing for the Ravens. Uh, Josh Jacobs going to the Packers, I thought was, well, I, I mean, that was the biggest surprise. Uh, was, in, in my opinion, was that. Because uh, th that kind of just came out of nowhere. And then you thought, oh, it's going to be Josh Jacobs and Aaron Jones. Well, that's not the case. So, um, you know, he, Aaron Jones ends up going to the Vikings. You know, Barkley, you kind of got the sense that Philadelphia was going to end up being his destination uh, based off of, you know, supposedly them having mutual interest. Well, then he ends up signing there. I thought Tony Pollard going to the Titans was interesting. I don't know how that's going to work out. Uh, Swift going to the Bears. I thought that was a good move for them. Now we just got to figure out what they do at the quarterback position. And we'll talk about them at the end of the show. But uh, Austin Eckler going to the command. Austin Eckler going to the Commanders. That's another one that was uh, interesting. Um, the Chargers obviously getting Gus Edwards. You know, and I, I'm guessing, you know, they'll probably, you know, draft a running back. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. I mean, this offseason has gotten off to a uh, a crazy start. I mean, especially day one. Um, not as m many moves as the first day, but, you know, still um, things have, it's, still things happened yesterday that we'll talk about. Um Actually, speaking of the Ravens, uh, I'll bring I'll bring up a, a signing that they made or a signing the Steelers made. They signed uh, Patrick Queen uh, to a three-year, forty-one million dollar deal. Um, obviously, he was a part of their linebacker core, and now he joins a rival. Um, I thought that was a good signing for the Steelers. Um, but like I said, we're gonna get into actually the Eagles and the Texans. We'll talk about some of their signings uh, in the next segment. Uh, there, there's some signings that I, like, just forgot to mention, like for the Texans. Well, I mean, we'll get into it, but, um, yeah. But there there's some signings that I uh, kind of miss just because, again, there's just been so much going on now. Um, but, yeah, like I said, in, in the next uh, in the next segment, we'll talk about the Texans and the um, and the Eagles as well because I, I think um, they, they've done well in the offseason. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, let me know what you guys think about Derrick Henry signing with the Ravens, Mixon going to the Texans. How do you think they're going to fit uh, with their new teams? I mean, I think Derrick Henry's going to do well. Uh, he's in a good spot. And I, I, you know what? And I think Joe Mixon will do okay. Um, you know, I, I think he's in a, uh, he's in a good situation with the Texans as well. The Texans are building something. And um, yeah, so we'll talk about the Texans more and we'll talk about the Eagles as well. Uh, when we come back from our um, first break of the show. So with that being said, stick around, and we'll be right back here on the GSMC Football Podcast. <laughs> 